The case began when a terrified man with a gunshot wound emerged from a dark forest crying out for help. He was, police allege, the target of a serial killer or killers in their midst. And tonight, they continue the grim search for more less fortunate victims. As for the apparent suspects in custody, one is a 52-year-old self-styled man of God, the other a teenage boy whose parents insist he's fallen under the older man's spell. With the very latest, here's ABC's Dan Harris. How did this 16-year-old high school junior from outside Akron, Ohio, a wannabe cop, a big lumbering popular kid named Brogan Rafferty, how did he get caught up in alleged serial killings where the victims were recruited on Craigslist? It's a sensational case making national headlines. Fatal scam, the deadly hoax. Breaking news, a man's body's found buried in a shallow grave. Wait, is he scared? Of course he's scared. Brogan's mother, Yvette Rafferty, says her son is in this situation because he made friends with the wrong person. And there is a monster here, but it's not my son. That monster, she says, is this man, 52-year-old Rich Beasley, known as Chaplin Rich, a self-proclaimed man of God who mentored her son for almost a decade and who now appears to be the prime suspect in this series of killings. Mm, I feel like I failed, you know. You know, do you want the peer pressure of kids or do you want them hanging around a chaplain and going to church and helping people? It was a no-brainer. For years, Chaplain Beasley cultivated a reputation around Akron as a do-gooder. He delivered meals to the needy, ran this halfway house, and ministered to people in trouble with the law. He was really trying not just to better himself, but to better absolutely everybody around him. But police say the Holy Roller reputation was a facade. Earlier this year, Chaplain Beasley was charged with selling OxyContin, growing marijuana, threatening his neighbor, and promoting prostitution. When he was released on bail, he reconnected with his mentee, Brogan Rafferty, and that, police say, is when the real trouble started. On October 7th, Beasley allegedly placed a Help Wanted ad on Craigslist, $300 a week to watch over a 688-acre farm in rural Ohio. Three days later, he allegedly held a series of interviews with applicants at this local mall. One of those applicants was Ron Sanson, an unemployed construction worker. When you met with him, what was he like? He was all right. I mean, no bells in my head went off about him. You know, like if he's going to be, you know, a mass murderer or something like that, which, you know, he's turning out to be, I guess. Sanson never got a call back, but several other men did. And on November 6th, one of them went into the woods for what he thought was going to be a job interview, but instead turned into attempted murder. He turned to see a gun pointed at his head. He deflected the gun and ran. As he was running from the gunman, he was shot in the arm. He survived and went to the police, who nine days later found a body in a shallow grave not far away. The next day, they arrested both Rich Beasley and Brogan Rafferty. And then this past Friday, police found two more bodies. When you heard a month or so later that people who did go for those interviews mm -hmm. apparently got shot and killed, right? what did you think? I thought, oh boy, <laughs> this could have been me. It is just the latest headline generating crime spree to be linked to Craigslist, which has been used by rapists, robbers, and the original so-called Craigslist killer, Philip Markoff, the medical resident who shot a masseuse he met over Craigslist. Unfortunately, Craigslist is just opportune for bad guys because you can be anonymous. I'm not sure it's Craigslist's fault because it's the nature of what they do. If these latest allegations turn out to be true, there are open questions about whether Rich Beasley sucked his 16-year-old friend into some sort of sick criminal apprenticeship Reminiscent of the D.C. sniper, John Allen Muhammad, who carried out his killings with his young sidekick, Lee Boyd Malvo. He would have had to have convinced the 16-year-old that what they were doing had some point or purpose. You can call it brainwashing, you can call it whatever you might, but looking at the D.C. sniper case, I interviewed Lee Boyd Malvo, and you could tell in the early days 
that he doesn't worship the ground that Muhammad walked on. Rich Beasley's attorney says her client is innocent, but Brogan Rafferty's parents are not buying it. In this exclusive audio interview, Brogan's father told me his son may have gone along with the plan because Beasley threatened him and his family. I think that he probably didn't realize what he was involved in until it was too late and, and over his head and that he was uh, in fear for his life and the lives of people that he loved. Brogan's mother told me her son will have to pay for his decision to hang around with the wrong person. I have the pain for these families and what my son's going through every day. And he has to live with this the rest of his life. Does he think about that? Oh, I know he does. Tonight, Brogan Rafferty sits in a juvenile detention center, and tomorrow he will likely be transferred to an adult prison. In a letter home, Brogan tells his family he fears that when he finally gets out, everybody he knows and loves will be dead. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in Akron, Ohio.